Testing, testing, testing. Is that good? Yep. This sounds good? Yep. Hey everyone, this is Mason and you're listening to the Herb Rally Podcast. If I sound different, it's because I'm on a different mic. Uh, Amanda and I drove up to Portland and I forgot my microphone, so we're, we're making do. But uh, the exciting thing is we're up here to record some video with herbalist Paul Bergner. Uh, and he's going to do a module for us for our first course. It's called The Art of Frugal Nutrition. To learn more about that, you could go to herbrally.com slash frugal nutrition uh, and Paul's going to do his own module but currently we already have three modules out uh, one's on dumpster diving with Giuseppe Spatafora uh, and that's today's episode we also have a module with uh, Kirsten Shockey on fermentation as well as a module on bone broth with Jade Alessandro Mace uh, and yeah each quarter of the year we're going to release a new module uh, so we got Paul Bergner coming up uh, I actually have one coming up uh, on nourishing herbal infusions, and next month we're going to be releasing Bevan Clare's Spice Apothecary module. So, again, to learn about this sliding scale, ever expanding uh, course, you could go to herbrally.com/slash frugal nutrition. And as I mentioned, today's episode is with Giuseppe Spatafora. Uh, he's a good friend. He came down to Springfield to hang out with Amanda and I, and uh, we did we spent a full day on him teaching everything there is to know about dumpster diving. So. What's more frugal than free? Uh, this episode today you're going to hear is uh, basically the intro, the why of dumpster diving. And uh, I think it's really profound and I think you'll get a lot of value out of it. But before we get into the show, I want to let you know that we released our new membership site. It's called the Herb Rally Schoolhouse. Basically what that is, is we release exclusive content Every week, that's going to be video content, written content, audio content to our schoolhouse members, and it only costs $10 a month. To learn more about that, you could go to herbrally.com slash schoolhouse, and through the end of February, we're offering a discount of your first 30 days for free with coupon code FREESCHOOL. So if you want to give it a try and check it out, uh, go to herbrally.com slash schoolhouse. At checkout, enter code FREESCHOOL. You'll get your first 30 days for free, and that actually automatically enters you to win a gift basket worth $210. Uh, we'll select a winner in early March. So good luck, and thanks for checking that out. And uh, now onto the show. Enjoy. My name is Giuseppe Spatafora, and I'm here today to talk to you about dumpster diving. I've been traveling the country for the last 15 or so years uh, with the free tea bus. Um, but one of the ways in which I existed out in the world was by collecting free food from dumpsters. And I guess I wanted to touch, uh, to talk about dumpster diving with you because dumpster diving in my mind is one of the ultimates in frugal nutrition. If getting food for free, and especially dumpster diving in places like natural food stores, places that may tend to have uh, better nutritional content in the food is a great way to, um, for not just personal health and nutrition, but many reasons. There's all kinds of social, environmental, economic reasons to dumpster dive. So I like to dumpster dive because it's free. And that's an economic reason, a personal economic reason. But beyond the personal economic reasons for dumpster diving, there are larger forces at work. In our current economic system, a business must grow somewhere around three or four percent a year in order to remain viable. And that's to deal with um, inefficiencies and inflation and, and things like that. But the basis of a capitalist system that we live in is perpetual growth. If a business doesn't grow at three or four percent a year, it's less likely to succeed and it will probably go under. But when you have, so you have a whole food industry that has to grow at three or 4% a year, but you have a population in the United States that only grows at 1% a year, somewhere around there. And how do you get people to buy more food than they need? How do you continue to get people buying more and more food? A couple ways are um, create food in a lab that is addictive so that people eat more. Um, create food in a lab that has very low nutritional value so that people have to eat more. Um, and then finally, incorporate food waste into the system. When you go to the store and you buy food, you're not just buying the food that you're eating, you're also buying all the food that's thrown away. That's a cost that's internalized by the system. 
And so we have created a culture and laws that uphold this culture around in making sure that food gets wasted. That is really stringent Best Buy and expiry dates, which are oftentimes have nothing to do with when a food is actually bad, especially foods like yogurts or other probiotic foods that um, were kind of initially created and used because they didn't go bad very easily. Um, and then you, we have this culture of, I don't want, we can't eat imperfect foods. If it's bruised, if it's crooked, if it's the package is damaged or something like that. So there's all these ways in which we've created a culture that upholds the system of food waste um, and the laws that surround that as well. So dumpster diving in an economic sense is going against a system that's designed to waste food. So alongside the economic reasons for dumpster diving, which are both personal and kind of part of a larger picture, um, there's also environmental reasons to dumpster dive. In the United States, somewhere between 30 and 40% of food is thrown away every day. And that's everywhere from the farm to your plate and beyond. Um, so one of the main places that food is wasted is at grocery stores themselves. Um, as well as you know some food distribution hubs. And though, that's a great place to intercept that food. But the environmental implications of growing a food, especially if it's grown in a harmful way to the environment, harvesting that food, refrigerating it, transporting it, dropping it off at a store, maybe processing it, making it into a value-added product, bring it to a store, refrigerating it, the lights in the store, um, all of the things that that it takes to bring food from the farm to your plate. There is energy embedded into that product all along. And then to turn around and to put that 30 or 40% of our food every day into the trash is a major environmental concern. Um, not to mention that when food ends up in the trash and in the landfill after taking energy to get there, food uh, biodegrades in the landfill in an anaerobic environment. Um, in anaerobic environments, biodegradable things create uh, methane, which is about 30 times more potent of a greenhouse gas than CO2. So every step of the way, our food system, and then the added steps of throwing that food away um, has major environmental concern. So if someone like you goes dumpster diving, you are basically reducing the need, because you're not buying that food, you're reducing the um, the demand side of the market to create more food, and you're also reducing all of these environmental costs that come into the uh, production and, and throwing away of food. Why isn't more food donated? In 1994, Bill Clinton signed into law the Bill Emerson Good Samaritan Act, and this um, law may releases from liability any restaurant or grocery store business that donates otherwise food that would otherwise be wasted through a charitable organization to hungry people. Um, and But I continue to find that businesses are still scared to give food away, even through organizations. And I, I get it. We live in a highly litigious society where people want to sue one another for the smallest thing. We are really good at shirking our own personal responsibility in this world. So there are all these mechanisms that are economic and political that push um, the system to stay where it is. Food businesses want food waste to occur because that's part of their bottom line. You as a consumer are still paying for that food waste. It's built in. Companies don't want to be sued. Um, you know, all of these factors, it's like a train going down the tracks where it's really difficult to alter the course once it's happened. And there's these little band-aid things that we as individuals can do, like dumpster diving, to help alleviate that. Uh, and I also want to just preface all of this with, I am a white middle-class male from America. I have great privilege. It is easier for me to do these things than it is for some other people. I have blind spots in this area, but I encourage anyone who has better understanding than I of what it's like to dumpster dive 
as a non-white person or a non-male or non-straight person, share your experiences with people, help educate people like me and other people about the realities of dumpster diving um, by, as a marginalized person. Through these videos, we're gonna talk about various aspects and elements of dumpster diving from preparing to actually going to safety and legal issues. So watch some of these videos, let me know what you think. And that's going to do it for today's episode. Thanks so much for listening to the Herb Rally podcast. If you'd like to hear more from us here at Herb Rally, we now have a text message community, believe it or not. Basically, it's just updates from us. We send about one to seven texts per week, uh, notifying you about new events, videos, courses, podcasts. You get the idea. It's pretty much like our email newsletter, just in text form. So if you'd like to receive text messages from Herb Rally, just text JOIN, that's J-O-I-N, to the number 541-256-2895. Again, that's JOIN to number 541-256-2895. And to stop receiving texts, that's easy too. Just text STOP to the same number. It'll opt you out immediately. Okay, thanks again for listening. Have a great rest of your day.